Hi, my name is Dr. Jackie Darby. I'm a licensed psychologist at American University in Washington, D.C. And this is... Hi, I'm Dr. Arupa Khan. Um, I am a postdoctoral fellow at the American University Counseling Center as well. So we're here on a Friday, as we have deemed now Clinician's Corner, to talk about relationships during quarantine and how, you know, stay-at-home orders can make stay-at-home orders a little bit complicated. No warning. <laughs> that was amazing, but it's Thank so you. real. I've been thinking about that too, how people are just like, I don't, I mean, okay, anyone who's like living with a partner, y'all did not plan for this to happen where you'd be stuck at home with them 24-7. Uh, you can't go and get a break. You can't go see other people to like clean your palate. Like you're just stuck with, you're just stuck with them at home. And that just, that's tough. <laughs> I love the clean your palate reference. It's saying so uh, fine eating. I really enjoyed that. Um, but also, even if you do live with your partner, um, there's usually breaks in the day, be it at work, be it at school, be it just to go out and go to the gym. But now due to stay at home orders in many states and places, those breaks are really far in between. Exactly. And I mean, like, let's acknowledge some of y'all might have been living together before this. Some of y'all might be like, in a partnership for years now, but I'm like totally positive. There are some people who are like, Oh, like we're quarantining. I'm not going to go home to my parents. I'm going to just stay with Bay instead. And like all of a sudden now, like y'all live together, y'all are roommates and like nobody thought this through and y'all are fighting now. And like, we understand it happens. Um, and we're here to help because that's rough. Um, I think the first thing I'll just talk about is, like, okay, everyone knows it. Right now you're living with Bay, and like you found out that Bay is kind of messy and you didn't think that would happen, but it happened, right? So there's like, I mean, I don't want to like um, assume any of the things that your partner is doing, but like, I'm just, I'm just spitballing, like eating all the Hypotheticals. Yeah, exactly. Like eating all the food in the fridge, which for me, like that is shots fired. Like it's, it's kind of over. Um, if there's like hair in the sink, hair on the carpet, there's hair everywhere. Like, mm, I'm not into that. Help me out, Dr. Darby. I mean, also too, you realize that they don't sort the laundry. They just put everything in and hope that Tide works it out. <laughs> or, you know, they don't have all the seasonings in the pantry. They just have salt, pepper, and maybe garlic powder, which if you don't have onion, cumin, paprika, allspice, flowers, I don't know what you're cooking with. Tragedy. And chili pepper, pepper. Chil and chili pepper. Come on now, like you need some chili, <laughs> okay? Everything that you eat. So not only will this be about quarantine uh, and relationships, it'll also be a cooking show to help um, you spice up your favorite power. Welcome to Dr. Khan's kitchen. Um, okay, just kidding. The point is, <laughs> there are things that are happening that you're probably not enjoying. They're probably not enjoying. And the thing is, like you might think, based on like media or just your own like. Uh, creativity that people can read your mind but they can't like if you're having any problem with anyone you've got to communicate it or nothing's going to change it's just not going to change All right so that's not the first tip right because it's actually a video where we're going to provide not just food commentary but actual tips is to communicate your needs say what's on your mind tell them how you feel um, so that they're able to adjust yeah, and we don't mean like, like let them know like, hey, by the way, I feel really bad for you because all you, all you use to season your food is salt and pepper. Like that's probably not going to go well, just like from my experience when I have said that, like just it doesn't go well. Um, but instead you want to be able to kind of say like, hey, I feel, you know, X, Y, Z. And like when you do um, X, Y, Z, like it makes me feel some type of way. Um, but also don't use those exact words because you want to actually tell them how it makes you feel um, and try to use emotion words. Those are important. Right. So it sounds like you're saying be good, clear, distinct, not kind of passive aggressive. Don't hit them with the it's funny how type situation um, or mm, that's interesting because that's not really communicating exactly what you're feeling at the time. Exactly. And like use your own experience. It is enough that you feel that way. I think sometimes people pull like 
ways to kind of like um, justify how they're feeling. Like, oh, I also heard from X, Y, and Z that they also feel this way when you do this. Which honestly, like in a time when you're trying to uh, resolve a conflict or even just express what's happening, it's not really helpful. And if you think about it, why is it not enough for you to just say like, I feel this way, right? And so what I guess part of what I'm saying is like, yeah, be clear in your communication and also like use I statement so you can just talk about your experience and that should be enough. Right, I, and I agree. And also I think when you're having conflict to have what I call um, conflict rules, what are ways or statements that are not on the table, right? When these words are stated, the escalation goes up a little bit more and now we're in that kid and bucking territory. And we didn't really plan to be in doing that, right? And so having words, having phrases, having a timeout word so that you could communicate with your partner like, hey, I need to cool off for a second before we engage in this conversation. Exactly, yeah. And like, I mean, you're only human, right? Like sometimes, sometimes things will escalate. It maybe won't go the best way. When that happens, like do walk away and then do try again when you feel differently. Um, there's like a stat somewhere, I think through the Gottman Institute of like during a conflict between especially partnership, when you begin to get that upset, like the blood is rushing so quick in your mind that you actually can't use any rational thought. And if you can't rationalize, you're not going to be having a very human discussion. Like it's just not going to happen. Um, and so in those moments, actually, it, it is just best to leave. And that might look right now in this quarantine, it might look like walking over to like the corner and just like kind of sitting there for a bit, but maybe even that's important. Um, and my hope for all of you is that there's like buy-in from both parties of kind of like recognizing that, hey, when we have these conflicts and these fights, we actually do need to take a step back and like walk away for a bit. Right. And also, I think I want to acknowledge that we're talking about conflict that is safe, right? Not conflict where you feel like your emotional or physical safety is at jeopardy. If that's the case, then you need to um, contact someone for emergency to make sure that, again, you are safe. That's the number one concern. But we're talking about conflict in which both parties are safe, both parties are just having this agreement, and they're willing to have the buy-in, like Dr. Khan was saying, to resolve the situation. But you mentioned a good point about being able to walk away. And so having that distance and creating those boundaries sounds like that's very important when trying to um, be okay with living with Bay for a longer period of time. Totally true. And I think, I think part of this will also look like, um, like setting boundaries around time. So like around, you know, these hours and these hours, like you stay over there, I'm going to be over here doing my thing. If there's actual space, like making, making like distance, like physical distance while you're working on, you know, taking a class or working on something. Um, and then something else that like we have to also throw in here. It is so hard in any relationship to like really grasp your sense of self and to hold on to that anyway, that in this time where you're potentially in like, I'm thinking like a studio apartment up in like in Columbia Heights or something like that with, with, with Bay and like, you have no room, you got no physical space, you're spending all of your time together. It's gonna to be much, much easier to just like lose yourself, right? In the music, in the moment, um, and just completely uh, not be able to recognize like where you begin and end and like where they, I mean, it's, it just happens to anyone anyway, but especially in this time, it feels really important to set boundaries around who you are and who they are, um, making sure like you kind of have you know, time to do things that you would typically do before this quarantine as well. Um, Cause you certainly don't want to like leave this without like a sense of even who you are. Right. And to kind of switch gears a little bit, right? Because relationships aren't just romantic. They're also familial and also with friends. So some of these tips that we are talking about, or I guess all these tips that we're talking about can be applied in those different relationships as well. Although it may be a little bit harder, especially I'm thinking with family. Definitely true. I think something, um, as we were kind of talking about why this is an important um, like video to make and kind of send out to people, we were also thinking about the students at AU that might identify as queer um, or gender nonconforming um, or trans. And regardless of, of what the identity is, not potentially being out to parents um, or to family members. 
and and also to to maybe not want to come out um or maybe to really use this time to come out like just all these variations are on our mind as well and i think it feels pretty important to acknowledge how that's a pretty unique situation um and i i think and dr darby please jump in whenever whenever you want to but the first thing that comes to mind um is safety uh, i think that there are some situations where it's just not physically safe um, for a risk to be taken and as much as like we could sit here and, and be really upset that that's the situation um, and you know you could also be really upset about that um, we really want you to be safe and for that to kind of take precedence over anything else right and i'm thinking of i will never tell someone not to be their authentic self that would never ever come out of my mouth but what i will tell people is know when the argument is worth it sometimes it's okay to say no we're not having this discussion or no i'm not going there or no i know you're trying to uh trick me into having this role that we always have but i'm going to take a step back and not do it today because i need to keep emotionally safe and that is totally okay to say that um i think every time we try to think that yes we have to go to an argument that we are invited to and actually you don't it's okay for that person to feel how they feel without you trying to justify or try to correct their thinking. If it's not safe for you to do that, then don't pick up that fight. Absolutely. I, I, I appreciate you saying that. I think um, both of us could definitely speak to how important it is to both of us, both personally and professionally, to be authentic and how much we want that for, you know, people that come our way. Um, <clears throat> and absolutely, yeah. Like, I hope that this can come across and it can be heard as, um, a way to kind of take care of yourself to protect yourself in this moment um and then you know the fight can come later right like this the revelation can come later um there can be other times like this is not the end-all be-all of like when you have to kind of make a decision about if you want to tell them or not tell them i, I hope that people can really prioritize you know what's going to make me feel safe and like what's going to make the rest of this undetermined amount of time uh livable and you know, where I can still like breathe and like be a person, even if I can't be the whole version of me that I want to be in this space. Yeah. And I think also too, is thinking about family is that sometimes we are called into roles that we kind of outgrown when we go to college and then now we're back at home and all of a sudden our family may be expecting us to fulfill those same roles. Um, and how do we justify, not justify, um, wrangle with that, that pull of do I do what they expect me to do? Like be the peacemaker, be the one who's always stirring up mess, um, be the one who's taking care of people, or do I kind of stand my ground and say, hey, I think I've kind of outgrown that. How can we negotiate? Um, and I think it's okay to have those discussions if you feel safe and you feel up to and emotionally available for it, to have those discussions because you don't have to fall into those same roles that your family may be expecting you to. Totally. And I think it's like partly the family's expectations and partly you might even like go a couple of weeks and then realize all of a sudden like, oh snap, like I'm doing that thing again. Like my mom's like literally serving me at the table um, and like cleans up after me and like is doing my laundry or like whatever the case might be. Um, and I hope, I mean, first of all, like that happens, right? Like it's kind of just like when the system gets back together, you just start playing a role. It's like automatic. The rest of the system needs you to play that role too. And so no one like, no one's like really like, unless like, I mean, other people might step in and be like, I'm not doing your laundry. Um, but I think it's okay if you like recognize like, Oh, like I'm doing that thing. And like, I worked really hard to stop doing this thing. Like when I went off to college, like I became really independent. Like I didn't need my mama anymore. And maybe like right now, all of a sudden you find yourself like you do kind of like want her to do those things or you want your dad to do certain things for you. Um, and it's not too late to course correct, right? Like I think the most you can do is like be aware of it and just see if you can like tweak certain things or like set different boundaries for things to change into a way that maybe feels more, um, more authentic for you or like more useful for you as well. And I think what I'm hearing too is this kind of compassion for yourself, recognizing that as you navigate these relationships, this is a very unique time. Um, people's stresses are high. Your emotional vulnerability may be higher than normal. 
And so if you find yourself falling to old patterns or find yourself falling to old traps, that it's okay to kind of say like, it's okay, sis, it happens. And to realize where you're at emotionally. So show you some compassion for you and your partner and family and friends as we are stuck in quarantine. Yeah, true. Is that how you talk to yourself? Like you say like, it's okay, sis? Oh yeah, yeah, it's okay, sis. I call my I call myself sis all the time. Really? Okay. Or yeah, do you not call you? Do you not talk to yourself like? like how do you talk to yourself? <laughs> I mean, I love that for like, you. I love that for you. I mean, queen. It's, oh, okay. it's okay, queen. Go ahead, queen. Yes. Either way, it's a positive talk, right? Oh, absolutely. Sis, queen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. I how do I how to, like train myself on this, right? Because like I always talk to client, like to people about like, um, like you want to have positive self talk. So this is my positive self talk. Exactly. You should have positive self talk for yourself and positive right. self talk for your partner or family member because everybody's a little bit of encouragement every now and again as you navigate the situation. Look at that! Like tied it all in with bow on top. Girl, that's why that's you know, I do what I do. <laughs> that's why you're here. We appreciate it. The last thing I'll say, I kind of like to, to piggyback off of Dr. Darby's point before we took it somewhere else. Um, overall, like with everything that's happening right now, this is unprecedented. Like it hasn't happened before. No one has like a rule book of how it's supposed to look or how it's supposed to go. If you're having a hard time, you're finding yourself having like a shorter fuse, you're maybe actually pretty good at navigating conflict, but right now it's much more difficult. I hope there's also some room to have some compassion for yourself. Um, this is a really hard time. And I think a lot of people are feeling impacted by it in a lot of different ways, whether that's, you know, very personally because people that they know are sick, um, people that they know are really struggling, you know, because of jobs, or if it's also just like this impending doom, we don't know like when it's going to end. We don't know exactly what's going to happen next. You should be having kind of a harder time. So I hope there's some compassion around that. And I also hope that some of these tips and some of the other videos that we're making will also help. Um, at the very, very, very least in, in supporting you and knowing that you're not alone in this. Right. And to prove that you're not alone, we do have our social media on Instagram, on Twitter, as well as Pinterest with different tips and tricks on how to navigate this time and other times in your life, as well as we have a mental health triage appointments, which information is listed on our website. Yeah. Is there anything else that we're forgetting? Um, I don't think so, but I must say I, I heard at least three music references in this talk, and I'm kind of proud of us. At least three? I think there were at least four. We'll talk about them afterwards. All right. Well, okay. Okay. So we'll we're going to have a conversation. But thank you so much for dropping in on the Clinician's Corner. You guys have a great day. All right. Bye.